All right, folks. Um, so like I said, um, I've got Riley down at the fire hall with me right now. We're going to do an orientation and an in-service into Edge 4. I'm going to go around the truck real quick and just show everyone a few things on the truck just so you guys can get identified with it. And then I'm going to fire it up and we're going to go through the functionality of everything, okay? So we'll just come to the back here. So, uh, so um, for those of you who haven't seen it yet, it's a very, very simple, simple pump, okay? It's a 250 GPM pump, so it does have the capacity to drain itself within about a minute or so. So if we've got all the orifices in this thing going full bore, it will drain itself in about a minute because the tank of water is 250 gallons as well. I'll get into that in a second. So we have an external uh, fuel tank here. One thing that we need to keep in mind with this thing is there's a fuel gauge on the top. There's no digital readout for the fuel gauge, but there also isn't any pressure relief valve, okay? So one thing that we need to keep in mind is every time we go near it, we gotta give it a bit of a burp, okay? Because it's gonna continue to do that all the time. Um, in the event that we run the, the thing dry of fuel, we have a fuel pump right here, which will pump into the, or which will feed the, the Honda engine, okay? Uh, moving over here, this is the control panel for the Honda, uh, the Honda pump, okay? Um, before we leave the fire hall, and I'll go through this part a little bit later too, but here's your power, okay? It's an independent fuel source that does not feed from the truck. It is an independent gas source right there. We have our tachometer. Our, uh, our PSI to how much is gonna be reading. There's also a light as soon as you turn the power on, I don't know if you can notice, but there is a light that goes on the, on the control panel right there as well. So turn it on manually from the back. You wanna hold your choke first. The first time that you fire the pump, if it hasn't ran in a while, you do need to choke it. But once it's warmed up, you don't need to choke it anymore. All right. Um, the auxiliary button, I'm not sure what that is for. I'm going to have to look in the schematics on that one as well. I tried looking for it before. I couldn't find it. Below that, you'll see the electric hose reel re rewind. This does become a two-person job because if we want to do this hose reel, uh, if we want to roll it up properly, we need to make sure that we've got somebody uh, feeding the, the hose in as we, as we move it up. It's very plucky as well, as you notice. Okay? <clears throat> um, all of this runs independent of the truck. There's a separate battery that runs everything back here in the pump. Uh, the electric generator on the pump that's combined with the pump as well, that will power the battery and keep it going. But we have to make sure that we just don't leave this on all the time. It will kill itself, okay? We're going to turn that off. All right. Directly below the hose reel line, we have our foam pump flurry, our mixture. I did play with this. The foam system on the truck is working perfectly. Um, for us to get the perfect concentration of foam that we want, we need to make sure that we're going at about 100 PSI. And, and I'll show you guys in a few minutes how that works. Um, how easy it is with the remote to make sure that we're getting at about 100 PSI. That gives us, it seems to give us the best concentration of foam. And all we gotta do is just turn it on. The foam that we're using in here, guys, uh, you'll notice next time you come down to the hall, in the wash bay over here, we've got some Class A foam. It's different than the Fire Aid, like the red stuff that's over there. We've got Class A foam that's sitting here. We'll just use this foam and this foam only in this truck, okay? It's meant for Class A fires, so no hydrocarbons, no car fires. Uh, no electrical fires, house fires, things of that, that nature. It's not meant for it, okay? It's just meant for grass fires. Um, please feel free to use it. We don't have a culture anymore where I want people to be afraid of using foam, okay? I want you guys to use foam as much as you want, all right? <clears throat> so going back to the truck. Um, we've got uh, our foam flurry here. Directly to the right of the foam flurry, this is our primer, okay? So when we go to engage the pump, I'm gonna turn on the choke. And I'll start the pump. So, what's right there? That's our priming line. You open that up, you see this water. And that helps us prime the pump. Um, we shouldn't have any reason why we would want to drain this thing. It's summertime now. It's nice out. We don't have to worry about draining the pump every time. Okay, so we can leave the pump full. But what we can use this primer for as well, um, this truck, the reason we went with a high pressure system and not an ultra high pressure. So the difference being is that uh, this truck will move a lot more volume of water. It doesn't give us that pressure washer style of pressure that Irma has or that, that uh, Chauvin or Wainwright has. And we didn't want that. The reason being is that a lot of times it makes a nice foam for the first 
year or two. And then after that, those foam lines get junked and it's, and they don't soak things down. So a lot of times you're having to go back and do mop up all over again. We wanted a truck that had a bit more volume and give us a bit more of a sloppy foam as opposed to a dry foam. <clears throat> so this, uh, this pump is a 250 GPM. And so with this 65 nozzle port here, we do have the ability to draft into the truck. We have uh, roughly 16 feet of uh, hard suction hose, of 65 millimeter hard suction hose. And uh, we do have another hard suction hose strainer that will fit this, that uh, some guys are gonna mount to the truck later on. As I'm going through this, guys, I would really appreciate it if you made up a list and put it into the group chat. You guys can even discuss yourself amongst yourselves right now. Um, things that you want to see on the truck. Some of the things that I've mentioned, I, I'm gonna want some bracketing for the, uh, I want the blower to live on this truck. I want some foam to live on this truck, jerry cans. We're gonna need another drip torch. I want some spanners possibly mounted here just to help us out with the hoses here. I'd like to see maybe a pony hose uh, put onto this truck as well. But um, yeah, so this truck will draft into itself. And when we're filling the truck as well, I strongly advise we use the 65 port here. There is a top fill on the back of the tank. Uh, we'll get to that in a second here. But I do strongly advise we use this, okay? Um, if we had a foam pump, we do have the option in the future if we want to get a foam pump we can attach it to here and actually fill the foam tank like this i would love to see that just because you don't get as many bubbles as you do when you try to pour it in from the top all right so maybe like a venturi or a, a siphon device of some sort that might help us out all righty uh, moving over to the top of the truck here so cody was nice enough last week to come in and put some forestry holes in there for us <clears throat> um so we're going to label these knobs as well, but what's great about this truck, guys, is that any time you get confused about what handle does what, just trace it back. Everything's nice and open on this truck. So, Alrighty. So, um, if you're ever wondering what hose goes where, you trace it back. So this one here goes to the forestry hose. This one here is our tank, tank circulation or tank fill as well, okay? Um, if you, if we're using the truck, we just have water and we're not employing foam, by all means, give this one a little bit of a crank. Spin this there. What that's going to do is it's going to allow the water that's in the pump from deadheading and it's going to just dump it back in the tank. All that excess pressure is just going to circulate and go back into the water tank. So it's going to keep our pump cool. If we are using foam, please do not touch this. Okay. The reason being is that if we're using foam, it's gonna, it, the way that the foam system works on this thing, it's a venturi effect that grabs the foam tank and it just adds to the, the assembly after the, the uh, discharge on the pump. So what's going to happen is if we've got our foam open at all and we crack our tank fill, what's going to happen is it's going to circulate that foam into our tank and we're going to batch mix our tank. We're going to dump our foam into our tank. We don't want to do that. And the last but not least for the booster wheel, it's right there. So you just got to push that down while the booster wheel's engaged. Okay? Everyone's good so far? If anyone has any questions or something so far, just raise your hand. Anyone raise your hand? No, it says that Renee has entered, or Renee left. Oh, Renee left? Oh, she's, she's at work right now. Okay. So um, one thing here as well, you'll notice here, that's our tank to pump right there. No reason why we should have to shut it. Um, I, I don't foresee a reason why we would need to, okay? <clears throat> All right, uh, moving along. So, oh, one last thing as well. Um, so we're going to get into the remote operation of this truck shortly. Um, so whatever, I, I encourage everyone to use the smart start system as much as we can. So if we're going back to water, shut the pump off. If we're just sitting for a little bit, waiting for it to come to us, shut the pump off. All right. Um, if we're just going to be following somebody that's got the blower, keep the foam off and just follow us, you know, but have it down at a, at a low idle. Okay. Um, if we do for some reason forget to do this, accidents happen, okay? I had them install a thermal relief valve right here. So what happens is, is that if the pump is deadheading, which means that the water is just pounding into, it's got nowhere to go, it's going to start getting hot. And that's how you actually blow pumps out, is that just deadheading that pump all the time. The water trying to go somewhere, and it's got nowhere to go. So when that water gets to a certain temperature, I don't know exactly what it is, but I'm going to guess it's being safe. This thermal relief valve will engage and it's going to bleed off that hot water. Okay, so it'll keep our pump from blowing. That doesn't mean that I want us to use it, but it's just a nice safety factor there. It's cheaper to get this replaced at about 800 bucks than to get a new pump at about 16 grand. Okay, alrighty, uh, moving along. Um, 
So you also notice here, oh sorry, um, there's a skin package here, will come out in the winter time. We have nuts here on both sides of the skin that undo. And what we'll do is we'll get a loader to come in, we just pull out, that's our storage, they come right out. And we'll get a little bit of bomb cat or something like that to come in, grab it right here. There's also two prongs at the front of the skid that are holding it in at the front. So on the front of the truck, there's two little prongs that the skid's sitting in. So when we pull this thing out, it has to be straight out. We can't lift it out because we'll lift the truck with it, okay? So it'll have to come right out of the back. And then we'll winterize it, we'll be good to go. Uh, right here as well, you'll notice that we've got a couple of valves here. These are actually bleeds or drains off of the water tank. Uh, the, there's a low pressure drain and there's another drain that comes off the water tank. I would like to see us maybe get a fitting or something like that where we can employ this to fill up our backpacks. I think that'd be really handy. So it's just a low point drain that just drains the pump. It's just head pressure, but it will, it will uh, fill our, fill our uh, backpacks if we wanted to do that, okay? All right, well, I'm moving along. We'll just go around the truck like that here. This is our foam tank. So it holds 10 gallons of foam, which is roughly two of those, those uh, uh, buckets there. And in case you ever wonder how much it holds, numbers there, it's firefighter proof, 10 gallons. <clears throat> um, when you do pour it in the top, just bear in mind that when we're pouring it in from the top, what's gonna happen is it's gonna bubble quite a bit, all right? It's gonna make a lot of suds. So if it gets too high and we're getting a lot of suds coming out the top, just stop, let it settle or do its thing, okay? If we're, I mean, of course, if we're, you know, balls to the wall and we're firefighting really hard, um, you know, of course, we got, some we got some bubbles coming out, whatever, we'll deal with it later. But we, try we want to try to minimize the amount of spill because that class A foam can be quite corrosive, okay? So if we do notice that we get any foam around the pump assembly or any of the electronics, we want to make sure that we give it a good rinse and a clean when we come back, okay? Not directly, like they said, a passive rinse, because there is a lot of electronics here. It is made for the elements, it's meant to go outside, but they said don't shoot it directly with a pressure washer, okay? Uh, moving along the truck as well, You'll notice that, uh, so the, the pump assembly that goes to the turret is up there, but it runs along down the bottom of the truck. We've all already addressed the fact that uh, Rocky Mountain Phoenix put the hose in for the monitor, not the greatest. They use zap straps. So they're going to send down some metal uh, cording, um, like a metal uh, uh, clasp uh, almost, or a collar. And uh, we're going to try using that instead, okay? So it's a free option. They gave it to us and we'll try that out. Um, you'll notice that there's low point drains all over the truck too. There's one in the back, another one here, and there's another one in front because the hose does have to come up and over the, the, the wheel well. Uh, once the truck, once the pressure gets down to, uh, I'd say below 20 PSI, what's going to happen is those check valves are automatically going to open and it's just going to bleed the water out. So if you see water coming out of those things after you've used the turret, don't be alarmed. It's supposed to, okay? Moving up to the turret. So the turret is, is a, it's a, a standard fog nozzle turret. It is quite beefy. <clears throat> um, it does have a fog nozzle on it. All of this is controllable from the truck. Unlike the turret that we have on Edge 1, you can't manipulate this thing manually without a key. There is a key that you can get. It's an Allen wrench that you can manipulate it around. Aside from that, unfortunately, it's all electronic. If you're looking at the turret right here, the way that we've got it set right now is at 30 gallons a minute. And if you take a good look up in there, you see 30 gallons, 60 gallons, 95 gallons, and 120 gallons. When I was playing with this the other day, the truck at an idle at 30 gallons a minute will still give us a stream of about 50 to 60 feet. That also gives us about eight and a half minutes of firefighting, eight and a half to 10 minutes of firefighting. That's just water. So that's at 30 gallons a minute with the truck just idling. And we're going to dial it up to 100 PSI and we're going to shoot foam. Now we're, we're using a lot more material a lot quicker. We're actually, we got about two minutes worth of firefighting. But bear in mind guys, this is you holding the trigger down for two minutes straight. When we're just idling and we're shooting water, that's you holding the trigger down for about eight to 10 minutes straight, okay? Um, the purpose of this truck is rapid attack, really quick. If we're fighting a grass fire somewhere, I fully intend that we're gonna be using the blower and someone's gonna be blowing that fire onto itself. And this girl's just gonna be behind us mopping up, okay? That's gonna allow us to conserve water a lot greater, okay? Of course, if you do have to go in and foam something and you gotta catch it quick, by all means, but just so you know, we wanna make sure that we're conserving our water the best we can. You can dial it back right now, the foam, the fog nozzle is in straight stream mode. <clears throat> um, if you dial the fog nozzle back into a fog, you'll notice that the, the nozzle does move back a bit or move forward a bit into fog pattern. And then what will happen is you're able to adjust that monitor if you do need to. 
I don't foresee any reason why we need to jump it up any more than 30 gallons a minute. We want to conserve water, okay? Um, unless we're just mopping up and we want to just dump our water and go home. Because I don't, I don't like bringing water home for me from a fire. I say just dump it. So if you want to just dial it up, soak something down, by all means, adjust the monitor. But make sure that when you leave the hall, she's at 30 gallons a minute all the time, okay? And this is the storage. This is how it will sit. This is how it will rip down into the lake. Um, for anyone that does have any questions, like they're worried that this thing might rattle off or something like that when you're driving, I put this thing on in Wainwright. I, I didn't drive like for long trips. Yes, it does come off, but I took this thing off when I left Wainwright. <clears throat> and um, I drove down the road and at the posted speed limit, it maintains it just fine. Okay, so we don't have to worry about it rattling off. It's on there really secure. If we do need to take it off though, there's a quick connect pin right here. It just pulls out like that. And then there's two electronic quick clips right there. It just pop out, that takes out the electrical, okay? Um, the, the hose is open in the winter time. So what we will probably have to do is, uh, they suggested we take a hockey puck and just put it in the hole. It won't fall down there, but it'll keep stuff from getting in, into the channel. Okay. So they said just to throw a, a, a hockey puck in there. So, as soon as you turn the key on to the power in the truck, like I didn't even have to start the engine, as soon as you turn the key on and the electronics fire up within the truck, what's going to happen is this thing's active, okay? There's no on or off switch for it. You turn the truck on, it's going to go, okay? This is also, it's a lot more reactive than the monitor on Edge 1. It's, a, it's way better that way. Um, it's, it's very quick to the touch. Like, there's no having to lead something or waiting, or there's no lag in the, in the monitor control off the joystick. It's, it's, you touch it right now, it works, okay? Um, let me come closer here, Riley. See, now that I've put it into fog pattern, now we can manipulate this dial here. We can dial up to 125, back down to 30, at 60 gallons a minute, 95 gallons a minute, 125, and back to 30, okay? <clears throat> so that's how you manipulate the monitor. Um, do you want to go to the window there, Riley? So what we'll do now is, oh, what the, it's me at the back of the truck. So before we leave the hall, guys, we're going to a fire. We're a fire, or we're, we're coming out. We're going to put the truck onto the trailer, and we're ready to go. Make sure you, before you leave, turn that guy on. Just turn it on to power. Don't need to start it yet. Okay. For the remote control system to work, the power does have to be activated from here. So we just have to hit that before we leave the hall. And we're good to go. Okay. Alrighty. So, um, so what we're going to do now, I'm just going to keep the truck off just to make a uh, limit the amount of uh, noise we're making. So this is the uh, starter for the smart start system. This is what will control the on and off function of the pump. And we can also control the throttle here as well. It's all clearly uh, defined here. And for the foreseeable future, this is the abridged manual. If you want to come in and play with this thing, by all means, please do. Just please make sure that you sterilize the truck when you leave. We have to make sure that we're being clean. All right, but this thing is on Velcro. It's got a fairly good range, but there isn't any reason why it should have to come out of here, okay? But we're gonna take it out of here just to show you guys how this thing works, okay? So we'll go to the back of the truck again. So we turn the power on. Power's ready there. So to engage the remote control, you press the power button once. You'll see two red lights flash, and then you're gonna see this thing that TX and RX, they're gonna be flickering green and yellow. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see that, but it does flicker. What that flickering light means is that this is now communicating with the antenna on the pump. So what we've done is we've just turned on the radio communications. We haven't turned on the pump yet. Next thing we're gonna wanna do, you see a uh, labeling here that points to our choke. Press the choke in. Hear the choke engage. Press the power. That's it. 
Does the antenna have to be up? No. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Um, so we do uh, slow, fast. So, I don't know if you guys noticed, but those three presses I did, that automatically got the pump up to 100 PSI. So the reason that that's important is that you, you'll hear you'll hear the gauge from inside the truck, but unfortunately there's no readout or digital display that tells us what the PSI is on the truck. So if we are wanting to run foam or we are wanting to do that, you might have to hit the foam before we go. But other than that, I might have to jump out and hit it. Um, but if not, just remember three presses, that gets you up to 100 PSI and that's gonna make it work perfect. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna shoot a little bit of water now. Put the hose back properly. There we go. Oh. Somebody driving through the bush with this thing? I think there's some scratches on the one side here. Uh, well, I'll ask you guys later. So, so right now the, the remote is off, everything is off, okay? So I'm just gonna turn the power on here just so I can manipulate the nozzle. So I'm gonna press that button once. So flickers, and now we've got that flickering, the green and yellow, like I was talking about. So that means it's communicating with the pump in the back now. Press power again. And because I choked it already, the A1 means that the pump is running, okay? So, to cover a bit of ground before it gets out the monitor, okay? So right now it's just, So this is the pump idling, okay? This is the, this is the pump that you do in That's the pump that you do in Okay, so we turn it off. There's about a four second delay before the pump off the water because the water has to stop the engine to do that. Okay, let's wait for the pump. So when I was shooting water, was it still pouring out of the bottom? Uh, it no, that, once it stopped once the, once the, like two seconds after you started spraying. So just a little bit of water that was pulled there, guys. Actually, it's not that bad. Use about an eighth of a tank full. So that's not that bad. Um, that's just with water, okay? So turn the power off. And that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna take that back, uh, 